Daniel chapter 3, <clears throat> excuse me, 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake, said unto him, It is true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if it be ready that the time which I shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbook, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down, worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And Nebuchadnezzar was in his furry and form, and we know the story. We're not getting to the story. Let's get to what the answer was by Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. They were calm, they were cool, and they're going to be sentenced. And they didn't retaliate, they didn't get angry, they didn't pull out later on their handguns. I know handguns weren't. They probably didn't have swords or weapons, but they wouldn't pull them out. They weren't. They didn't protest. You will hear when when, when the, the the sentence of no prayer. Uh, let me go here. Uh, I can't find it. My Bible is well, well. The law was put forth about about the the law of no prayer, and there was a law put forth that Daniel, or well, actually nobody could pray. And what did Daniel do? Daniel went to his house, inside his house, closed the door, went to the window that faced Jerusalem, knelt down, and prayed. He didn't get angry. He didn't retaliate. He didn't hold signs. He didn't get banners. He didn't call no organization. He disobeyed the government. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo disobeyed the government. Peter and John disobeyed the government by preaching Jesus. And when Peter and John was brought before the Sanhedrin in Acts, they didn't retaliate. They said, you know, you, you know, call them every four-letter word and call them, you stupid party people, you stupid scientists. If we had this, no, they didn't do that. I believe when Peter spoke to Sanhedrin, I believe when, when, when Daniel speaks before the king, Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo speaks before the king, I believe they were in a, with a calm, respectful voice. You know what I mean? And it says here, verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king. He's a king. They did, you know, instead of O king, you know what other words they could do? And go and read Facebook posts on, on, on Christians who did not get their president that they wanted. And read their posts and read. It's a shame on how Christians are acting today because of a party of Republican and Democrat. 
That's how Christians not not to, not to react. Jesus stood before Pilate, and he said, "Listen." At one point in time, he said, "I can call legions of angels," and he didn't. Jesus stood before Pilate, and God, who has all power and authority, could have said, "Drop dead and go to hell." And he didn't. And Jesus was respectful to Pilate and to Herod. And he was respectful to the high priest when he stood his judgment. We got examples on how we're to react when the government crosses the commandment of God. The king signed a decree, no prayer. God says, pray. The king signed a decree that you're to worship the golden image. God says, don't worship golden images. The government of the Sanhedrin signed a petition, no preaching Jesus Christ. Jesus said, preach me. Preach the gospel. The, the, the people of Israel turned Jesus Christ over to the Roman government. Do you realize each besides Judas, including Paul, each of the 12 apostles stood before a judgment at one time in their life. John, the only apostle that did not die a violent death, was put off on the island Patmos. He had to stand before judgment. Peter, James, and John, and Paul stood before, the, before a judgment. And even one time, Paul standing before judgment got a little antsy with his mouth and then he apologized he goes i wish you weren't in charge for the bible says i'm to give you know respect that, that's not what it said but i'm to give respect to the power and authority now i've had a couple times in my instance of the street ministry and the last one last month was you know the farmer's market does not want us there preaching the gospel. And we moved location. We're on the sidewalk. I know the laws. I know the laws, what I can do. So I'm on the sidewalk, and the cop comes up to me, and you can't be doing this here. I do one of them Nehemiah prayers. And I say, officer, I'm sorry, you're wrong. I didn't say, you know, you stupid police officer, but you know, Christian lives matter. Uh, you know, you need to. I, I didn't act like that. I said, sir, respectfully, you're wrong. You ought to know better. No, I didn't say that. And we went back and forth a little bit, and I'm praying and talking to the officer with respect. Officer, I, I forgot his name, but I could see his name play. Everything, officer, like the old king. I said, officer, well, let me have you, let me call my lawyer on the phone. And he said, okay. Thank you, officer. And I got my lawyer who represents us on the, on the Christian battlefield. And they're talking back and forth on the phone. And at one point in time, the officer said, well, listen, if he continues to preach, I'm going to arrest him. That's the same thing. I mean, I wouldn't go into a fiery furnace, but I was going to go to jail. Literally, I was going to go to jail. And, he, and the officer handed me the phone. And he says, I'll, I'll let you talk to your to, to the preacher. And my lawyer and I talked back and forth. And I, said, <clears throat> I turned off the phone. And I said, officer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home. I am not admitting defeat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go home. My lawyer is going to work it out with the city attorneys. And I'll tell you what, officer. If I am wrong, I won't be here no more. But I'm wrong. I mean, uh, you're wrong. I'm right. I, I will be here. But the, the lawyers are going to work it out. I'm going to respectfully leave. I'm not going to have you arrest me. And if my lawyer works it out and I, I, my lawyer knows I'm supposed I can be here, I'll be here next week. And my lawyer, my lawyer met with the city's lawyer. And, you know, the city of Daytona Beach told my lawyer to tell me. We were pleased that you, you, you didn't take a stand and you did not get arrested. 
we were very pleased that he just walked away. From, the police officer said when we talked to him, that was respectful. And the police officer said, you know, you know what he said? He says, I don't want to be a, me. This is what I said. I don't want to be a jerk. Because I have a testimony before the Daytona Police Department. And I can't be a jerk and I can't be an idiot. Do you know, I, I believe that Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible got saved, Old Testament salvation. I believe by the standing of Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, how they stood proper and well with respect. I believe Nebuchadnezzar got right. And I, I hear now, and I, I, get, I get people who are my secret spies at the farmer's market. And I've had a couple of them come up to me and say, you know, I've heard the Daytona Police Department talking about you. Said, okay. And one guy told me, he says, you know what? There's a couple of police officers that speak well for you. And they said it wasn't for the fact... Now, this is, this is what someone else told me. Is it wasn't for the fact that they were wearing a uniform and a badge at that time. A couple police officers, that they said, would come up and shake my hand for what I do. And then I had, then the, another one told me about a police officer. And also the person that that is in charge weekly. Uh, that person is there every Saturday. Not the head, but, you know, their, their job is to run the, the farmer's market on, on Saturdays. They're there. A police officer had been reported, and that person told me, he said, you know what? We don't like what you're doing. But, we're, you know, what you do is an aggravation to us, and people don't like, yeah, I understand. I told you, yeah. But you yourself, you know what? You're not abusive. You cooperate. And we know if, if we walked up to you and say, listen, you know, we got a situation. We know you can do what you're doing. But if you would please, not for an hour, or if you would please for go on this side of the street this week. I mean, we know you you would you would cooperate with us. You would help us if we had a simple uh, request for whatever matter. And we. But most of the Daytona police officers, and, and don't go down there for other reasons, not always for us, and they'll wave to us. And they'll say hi to us. And we are an enemy of the state because we preach the gospel because of respecting the power and the authority. That's what we ought to do as Christians. Now, I just sent off a letter to President Biden. Yes, he's my president. No, I don't vote. I sent President Biden and his wife, Julie, not Jill, uh, Jill a letter of salvation and gospel tracts. And I... I'm praying hard for, for the, that, that letter and those tracts will get into it. I know other people read them. I'm praying that God will put it in those hands of a Christian that will put that letter and those tracts in his hand or his wife's hand. But do you know what I fear about that letter? No, I don't fear persecution. If it happens, it happens. You know that my number one fear of that letter of the to the President of the United States? You say, what's that, Styling? The conduct of many Christians out there and their egotistical, stupid attitude. Hey, it's not my president. Uh, the Democrats stole it. Oh, the Democrats. Oh, but the Democrats. Oh, the Democrats. This is so rotten. We want our government back. And they do it in the name of God, Republicans, and guns. And there's no God in it. I fear on how idiotic can see that Christians have acted since November. 
My fear is he, if he gets that letter and he looks at the Christian attitude, which many, I, I, I mean, some, I believe, are not even saved. That looking at the Christian attitude of many stupid Christians out there, he may or may not read that letter and he may not or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because the stupid remarks, the stupid actions by stupid Christians because they didn't get their stupid president in office. That many stupid Christians did not act like Daniel. They did not act like Shadrach, Meshach, and the goat. They did not act like Peter and, uh, and John. And they did not act like Jesus Christ. And we'll be ashamed that how many people have been turned away from God because you did not get the president you wanted. You crybaby, sissy little brat. Mom, will you pick up that, that crying baby and take change his diapers and put him in the playpen? He doesn't need to be in life. He don't know how to handle life. He didn't get the toy he wanted at, at the toy store. He didn't get the ice cream flavor he wanted. Wah! And he put a, a, a kink of Christians who are trying to live right and trying to witness in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to grow Christians right. When you come to the powers of authority, you're to treat them with respect and with honor, Romans 13. And when Peter and, and Paul write about the honor and power given to the government and how we're to treat them respectfully and treat them honorably, the ruler of that time was Nero. And Christians, if you don't know about Nero, you don't know about church history, you don't understand the history of the Bible, I don't mean King James, I mean how men acted before people as Christians, as children of God, how Nehemiah went before a king. If you don't understand that history, then shut up about saying I'm a Christian. Because you don't know how to act like one.